Hi guys, uh, my name is Sanjay Gupta. I am a consultant cardiologist in York. Today I wanted to do a video on a very interesting subject and that is dysautonomia and particularly a type of dysautonomia called POTS, postural tachycardia syndrome. Now for those who don't know what this is, uh, I would recommend you watch my earlier video which is entitled Understanding Dysautonomia and this is on YouTube. I posted it last week. Um, but basically what I explained in this is that there's this condition called POTS, postural tachycardia syndrome, in which, which tends to affect young women between the age of 14 to 45, and they're generally completely normal, and then some one day they get hit either by a virus or they go through a period of stress or something happens, and after that what they find is that they're extremely fatigued uh, and they struggle to maintain an upright posture for a prolonged period of time. So when they do so, when they stand up, they feel very dizzy, their heart rate goes up, they get palpitations, they get brain fog, they may get headache, and they therefore have to lie down. And this is incredibly debilitating, very poorly understood, and a lot of times these people go to the doctors, the doctors don't know what this condition is, they think it's a virus, but it never seems to get better, then they go and see more specialists, and the specialist says, oh, you know, um, it takes some more salt and takes some more fluid, and uh, very many patients with POTS don't seem to find that that makes a huge difference. And this seems to be the standard wisdom, you know, more fluid, more salt. Uh, but I uh, became very interested in this condition and I thought I would do some reading and do some research. And I have some really fascinating insight to share with you today um, as to actually how you can go about really making a difference to your symptoms with POTS, all right? The um, first thing to understand is that what happens with POTS is this, okay? We have something called the autonomic nervous system, uh, which regulates our, uh, the function of our organs, etc. Uh, and basically the autonomic system works like this, all right? We're normally like this. We have some kind of trigger uh, which uh, stimulates our sympathetic system, which is the uh, flight or fight uh, response. So for example, if we get scared, what will happen is the trigger will activate our sympathetic system, we'll get more adrenaline, etc. that feeling of adrenaline surging in our body, and then the parasympathetic system tends to bring it down. If you have a bigger trigger, a bigger response, and then it comes down. The thing with us is that we recognize, well, if there is a trigger, we recognize that that trigger would cause those symptoms in us, so we're not too phased by them, we attribute it to the trigger. But what happens in POTS is because it's a dysautonomia, the pivot goes here, okay? And now what happens is a small trigger, which we wouldn't recognize to be, obviously, because it's such a small trigger, causes an exaggerated increase in the flight or fright response, the flight or fight response. So you get much more adrenaline for very small triggers. And that is very disconcerting uh, because, you know, we can't understand why we feel like that when we're not actually faced with a situation that would do that. So just, for example, standing will cause... Uh, normally would cause a small um, uh, activation in the, it would be a small trigger and cause a small sympathetic rise, so a small rise in the flight or fright response. But in parts, what happens is standing does this, and so you get a much higher response. And this is why people start feeling these palpitations. They feel their breathing rate goes up. They feel breathless. They feel just really, really uncomfortable standing up. Now, what is really, really interesting, and one of the unique ways in which you can help heal your POTS is this, that although we always, you know, although these people are told, look, you know, increase your fluid intake, increase your salt intake, increase, um, uh, you know, your level of exercise to, because you can get deconditioned, uh, very, uh, it's very difficult for patients to do this because they're always really, really tired. All right. And they say, well, you know, I'm so tired. How can I do these things? And this is completely understandable. So if you can improve your tiredness during the day, it would allow you to do some of the other things like exercise to improve your deconditioning, which will make things better. So how do you go about improving your tiredness? And this is where I think I have something really, really interesting to share with you. And the reason and one of the most common reasons why people with POTS or in dysautonomia, feel so tired is because they don't sleep well, all right? 
Now, the problem with uh, POTS and pro uh, dysautonomia in general is that patients often have something called sleep misperception, which means that they don't realize that they don't sleep well. Okay, and so they may think that they're sleeping well, but they don't actually sleep that well. And when you study them um, in a sleep lab and with sleep monitors, you realize that they don't sleep that well. And I will explain to you why they don't sleep well and why they don't realize that they haven't slept well. Right, look, what happens in POTS is this, all right? Um, here's your trigger. Now, in a normal person, for example, when you're sleeping, you go through different phases of sleep, including this thing called REM sleep, rapid eye movement sleep. In rapid eye movement sleep, what normally happens is you get some sympathetic activation. That's when you get the dreams, etc. So in rapid eye movement sleep, you get some sympathetic activation, all right? Now, in POTS, what happens is when you go into REM sleep, you get the same sympathetic activation, but it causes a huge rise. So you get the same trigger. The REM causes sympathetic activation, but you get such a big rise in sympathetic activity. So you get the surge of an increased heart rate, all the kind of adrenaline rush that would happen, but you're asleep. And what happens then is because all this is causing a state of arousal, because the flight or fight system is about being aroused, um, um, what happens is that people actually are aroused from sleep and or even wake up because of this surge of sympathetic activity, the heart rate going up, all this catecholamines and all these catecholamines in the blood supply. And so therefore what happens is the patient actually ends up waking up. Now the problem is you have to be woken for two minutes to realize that you've woken up. So if you wake up only for 30 seconds or less than 30 seconds or less than two minutes, and then you may actually have woken up and not realize that you've woken up. And it's very interesting because when you study these patients, you will find that just before they've woken up, uh, their heart rate goes up. So what happens is, again, so if, you, so if you're someone who is in pain, for example, when you go to sleep, so you're in pain during REM sleep, your sympathetic activity goes up. If you sense pain, your sympathetic activity goes up much more. You wake up. You don't realize you've woken up because you go back to sleep straight away after that within 30 seconds. So you don't realize that you've woken up, but you've woken up. And you do this all night long. You do this all night long. You do this if you're in pain. You do this if you're having nightmares. You do this if you're having REM sleep. You do this if you are dehydrated. Um, you know, so, so and, and because you're doing this all night, of course, you're going to be extremely tired during the daytime. And this is um, one of the most important things to try and get across that this kind of these kind of uh, this kind of sympathetic exaggerated sympathetic response occurs at night as well and when it occurs in night it causes a state of arousal people uh, wake up they don't realize it they go back to sleep so even though you may think you'd sleep okay it is worth getting checked out because if you have this then tackling this will make your tiredness a lot better. And if that happens, then you can, uh, your quality of life improves uh, uh, and, and you can do the exercises and you can do all the kind of stuff that other doctors recommend, which will then allow things to get even better. So targeting your sleep is really, really important. And in the next few videos, I'm going to talk to you about how you do this. One other thing I want to mention is that with dysautonomia, what tends to happen is although the trigger point moves this way, the more swings you have, the more the trigger point keeps moving this way. So one of the best things about healing the system is to avoid these big swings. When do you get these big swings? You get these big swings during the daytime, but at night. But it may be much easier to try and tackle them at night because if you can tackle them at night, then you're stopping this pivot from moving this way and causing even more exaggerated responses. And slowly you can start trying to move this pivot back and allow uh, a, more, um, uh, a more settled autonomic nervous system. So I hope this was useful. I'm really excited about this. I hope that some of you get um, uh, comfort from this video, that there may be other ways to tackle your POTS and your dysautonomia, which may result in a much better quality of life. So look out for my next video in which I will talk about natural ways that you can do this. And then I will also talk about medications that you can use as an adjunct 
for a little while, which may help this. Unfortunately, not many doctors know this. So I think this is something really, really interesting. Uh, and I got a lot of this insight from a doctor who is a sleep expert who presented at one of the dysautonomia conferences. Thank you so much. My name is Sanjay Gupta. I'm a cardiologist and I work in York Hospital. And if you have um, any questions, please don't hesitate to send me an email on uh, my website, www.yorkcardiology.co.uk. If you enjoyed this, please consider subscribing, sharing, commenting. Uh, it, would be, it would mean a ton. Thank you. All right. Bye.